Hello, young discoverers. After having learnt to differentiate metals and non-metals on the basis of their physical and chemical properties, I am sure you must be curious to know where do these metals come from. So now, we will discuss the occurrence of metals and their extraction. But before we proceed, do you want to hear a story? Here is a story about class 10th boy named Gopal. Gopal had gone to visit his grandparents in village near Jharkhand. He is overjoyed about a coin given to him by his great grandfather. He is told that it is made of copper. He wonders from where this metal comes. His grandfather told him it is found beneath the earth. Gopal grows more curious and goes to his cousin Tara's home because she has internet facility. They explored various websites and links. Together they sit and explore the wonderful world of metals. On the internet, Gopal and Tara discover that the earth's crust is major source of metals. So metals are mined from earth's crust. Apart from this, sea water also contains some soluble salts such as sodium chloride, magnesium chloride and many more. The elements or compounds which occur naturally in earth crust, you know what they are known as? They are called minerals. India is gifted with mineral resources. Try filling it in the map shown on the screen. At some places, minerals contain a very high percentage of a particular metal and the metal can be profitably extracted from it. So these minerals are called ores. Remember the word ores? Okay. You have learnt about the activity series of metals. The metals at the bottom of the activity series are least reactive. These metals are found in earth's crust in free state in nature. These are noble metals, gold, silver and platinum and remember that is why they are expensive. But most metals do not occur in their free state. They are very reactive and unstable in surroundings. They react with other metals to form compounds to attain stability. Copper and silver are also found in combined state as their sulphide and oxidores. So the metals at the top of activity series as you can see potassium, sodium, calcium, magnesium and aluminium are so reactive that they are never found in nature as free elements. These metals in the middle of activity series, here you can see zinc, iron, lead, they are moderately reactive. They are found in earth's crust mainly as oxides, sulphides or carbonates. You will find that the ores of many metals are oxides. You know what the reason is? This is because oxygen is very reactive element and is very abundantly found on earth. On the screen you can see the percentage of various metals. So Gopal and Tara get to know that yes on the basis of reactivity we can group the metals into three categories. Metals of low reactivity, metals of medium reactivity and metals of high reactivity. Different techniques have to be applied for obtaining the metals falling in each category. Silver and gold, as you discussed, they are found in native state. So they are placed at the bottom of the series. And once again, let us recall that zinc, iron, lead, copper, they are obtained by reduction using carbon and the ones at the top of the activity series are so reactive that they are obtained by electrolysis. 
Gopal and Tara, they become more curious and they want to know the detail. So they explore further. Several steps are involved in extraction of pure metal from ores. You can see the flow chart on the screen. Let's discuss each step in detail. Hope along with Tara and Gopal, you two are tabulating and collating your data. Now my little discoverers, always remember that ores mined from earth are usually contaminated with large amount of impurities such as soil or sand and they are called gang. Note the spelling G-A-N-G-U-E. Yes, it's pronounced as gang. So these impurities need to be removed. Question is how? Based on the differences between the physical or chemical properties of the gang and the ore, we use different separation techniques. And removal of impurities from ores, this is called enrichment of ore. So write it down. Yes, Gopal and Tara already have written this. Enrichment of ores. Now, coming to extracting metals low in the activity series. So you want to know? Equally curious like Gopal and Tara? Good. Now, these metals are very unreactive. And oxides of these metals can be reduced to metals by heating alone. Let's see an example. Cinnabar, can you recall what is the formula for cinnabar? It is HgS. This is an ore of mercury. When it is heated in air, it is first converted into mercuric oxide that is HgO. Mercuric oxide is then reduced to mercury on further heating. You can see the reactions on the slide. 2 HgS when reacts with oxygen gives 2 HgO and sulfur dioxide is liberated. And this HgO, look at the reaction carefully and yes, always remember you have to write balanced chemical equation. So here goes the equation 2 HgO within brackets you can write S. This turns into 2 Hg plus oxygen gas is given out. Now tell me, copper is found as which compound? Come on, just now you learnt. Any guesses? Yes, it is found as copper sulphide in nature and so can be obtained from its ore by just heating in air. You can see the reactions on slide. 2 Cu2S plus 3O2 on heating gives copper oxide and sulfur dioxide. And this copper oxide when combines on further heating with copper sulfide, what will it give? Which gas? Yes, it is found as copper sulfide in nature and so can be obtained from its ore by just heating in air. You can see the reactions on slide. What do they say? 2 Cu2S plus 3 O2 on heating gives copper oxide. You have to mention it as 2 Cu2O within brackets do not forget to mention the state. Here it is S that is for solid and 2 SO2 within brackets you can write small g. And this copper oxide when combines on further heating with copper sulphide, it gives copper along with which gas? Can you guess? Sulphur dioxide gas, yes. Now coming to extracting metals in the middle of activity series. Which metals are in the middle of activity series? Yes, can you guess? Come on, Gopal has already guessed. They are iron, zinc, lead, copper. Very good. They are moderately reactive. 
So, these are usually present as sulphides or carbonates in nature and you know that it is easier to obtain metal from its oxide compared to its sulphides and carbonates. So, here they are present as sulphides and carbonates. So, what we should do? We have to first convert them into metal oxides. On the slide you can see the flow chart. Yes, the sulphide ores are converted into oxides by heating strongly in presence of excess air and this process is called roasting. Please go back to the definition what it says strongly in presence of air you have to remember this that is why it is called roasting. You have the reaction on the slide here you can see that zinc sulphide gets converted to zinc oxide on heating with air and also note young learners that sulphur dioxide gas is also evolved. Yes, note down this reaction quickly. Now we have zinc oxide here which can be reduced to zinc metals by using reducing agent. Can you name some reducing agent? Well, carbon is one. So, you can see the reaction on the screen that zinc oxide when reacts with carbon which is reducing agent here, it is converting to zinc and carbon monoxide. Now, you are already familiar with process of oxidation and reduction explained in first chapter. Can we term this process of obtaining metals from this compound also a reduction process? Yes, you can guess, you are right, it is a reduction process. On the other hand, carbonate ores are changed into oxides by heating strongly in limited air or you can say absence of air. So, this process is called calcination. So, note down these two terms children and in your mind compare that are they different? Well, in calcination it is in absence of air and roasting was? Yes, you are right, it was strongly in presence of air the heating. So, you can see it clearly on the screen that zinc carbonate on heating gives zinc oxide and carbon dioxide. So, note here that here the gas evolved is carbon dioxide gas. Keep in mind the differences between roasting and calcination. Now my dear discoverers, now you know why we converted sulphide ore and carbonate ore to zinc oxide? Yes, because it is easier to obtain metal from its oxide as compared to sulphides and carbonates. So now you have zinc oxide again and you can write the reaction yourself how to obtain metallic zinc. Now besides using carbon which is a reducing agent to reduce metal oxide into metals, we can sometimes use displacement reactions also. The highly reactive metals can you name which were on the top of the activity series? Sodium was one, yes. So sodium, calcium, aluminium, they are also used as reducing agents because can you guess the reason? Just think about the displacement reactions. Yes, they can displace metals of lower reactivity from their compounds. So when manganese dioxide is heated with aluminum powder, aluminum oxide is obtained. You can look at the reaction. Now here is a small task for you. Can you identify the substances that are getting oxidized and reduced? These displacement reactions are highly exothermic. The amount of heat evolved is so large that the metals are produced in molten state. So this molten state is very, very useful to us. You all must have traveled by trains. Have you ever observed repair work that goes on on the railway tracks? 
Well, now you will be able to relate that the reaction of iron oxide with aluminum is used to join railway tracks or cracked machine parts. And this is the application of science in life. And well, this reaction is known as thermit reaction. On the slide, you can see that how the railway tracks are getting repaired and also the reaction. Now, how to extract metals at the top of the reactivity series? These metals are high up in reactivity series, so they are very, very reactive. They cannot be obtained from their compounds by simply heating with carbon. Because carbon cannot reduce the oxides of sodium, magnesium, calcium, aluminum into metals. This is because these metals have more affinity for oxygen than carbon. So, we extract these metals by process known as electrolytic reduction. So, yes, now you are going to learn what is electrolytic reduction. As the name suggests, electrolytic, what does it tell you? Use of electrolytes, use of electrolytic cell, right? Use of passage of electric current and reduction, the name suggests. Okay, so let's go and learn. The metals here, as you can see, are deposited at cathode, the negatively charged electrode. Whereas, chlorine is liberated at the anode. See here, the electrolyte used was? Yes, correct, sodium chloride. So, at the positively charged electrode, what are we getting? Chlorine. You can see in the reactions which are mentioned on the screen. Similarly, aluminum can also be obtained by electrolytic reduction. So, we can use aluminum oxide as electrolyte over there. Now, we have extracted our metals, but they must have collected some impurity during the process. So, now it is time for refining of metals. So, to obtain our metals that is in pure state, the most common method for refining is electrolytic refining. Many metals Yes, you can again refer to your reactivity series such as copper, zinc, tin, nickel, silver and gold. They are refined electrolytically. Now, look at the screen and observe carefully. Remember, Gopal and Tara are also on the journey of learning with you. As you can see on the screen, in this process, Impure metal is made the anode and a thin strip of pure metal is made the cathode and a solution of the metal salt is used as an electrolyte. Yes, here we have used copper sulphate as electrolyte and on passing the current through the electrolyte, the pure metal, in this case the pure copper. The electrolyte used here is acidified copper sulphate and on passing the current through this electrolyte, the pure metal of copper from the anode dissolves into the electrolyte and an equivalent amount of pure metal from the electrolyte is deposited on the cathode. Watch carefully on the screen. The soluble impurities go into the solution, whereas the insoluble impurities settle at the bottom of the anode. So, because they settle at the bottom of the anode, they are known as anode mud. Learners, I hope you all enjoyed learning how metals are extracted from its ore using various steps. So, can you just quickly tell me the steps? Come on. Yes. So, first was enrichment of ore. Second step was conversion of ore into metal oxide by roasting or calcination. 
Third was reduction of metal oxide into metals by using reducing agents such as carbon or displacement reactions we considered or by electrolytic reduction. And the last step was refining of metals by electrolytic refining. So now you have to complete the story present in the form of comic strips or drawings and dialogues between Gopal and Tara. You can add instances where Gopal's grandfather took him to the mining site and he and Tara got the opportunity to see process of extraction of metals. Remember to collect all the relevant information during your adventure and tabulate it. So my dear young learners, we just now learnt about extraction of metals and these metals you know are found beneath the earth. They are so precious to us and yes, I know you all are so energetic, so self-motivated and you learn more through your personal experiences, observation and interaction with the environment around. You all must have observed that at home we keep silver jewelry wrapped in cotton or airtight box. Look, I was not so careful and what happened to my jewelry pieces? The silver articles sometimes become black. Here see my earrings, the outer surface has turned somewhat black. And you know why this happens? Because if left exposed to air, they react with sulfur in the air to give silver sulfide. That's the coating it has got. And look here, I have this vessel. It has some green coat. You know why? Because copper reacts with moist carbon dioxide in the air and slowly loses its shiny brown surface and gains a green coat. This green substance is basic copper carbonate. Now, it's a common observation that iron when exposed to moist air for a long time, what does it acquire? Yes, coating of brown flaky substance. And you know what that substance is called. It is rust, right? Have you ever observed that the mesh window of a chemistry laboratory are more rusted than those of classroom? Can you guess why this difference is there? Is it because of chemicals? Or is it because of more heat? Or probably because of more fumes? So form a WhatsApp group of four or five friends and probe each other. This way it can lead to further explorations of ideas. Sharing of ideas can be done even through emails and this will facilitate visiting and revisiting the concepts. Write your observations. This may lead to further questions or queries to find out the conditions under which iron rusts. Now here is an interesting project. Project based learning is a need of our. You as students need to develop ability to inquire, explain, analyze and then interpret the scientific processes and the phenomena more than ability to recall a specific fact. You may perform this activity at home. Take three small bottles made of glass and place clean iron nails in each of them. You can label them as A, B or C. Pour some water in bottle A, leaving the heads of nails outside the water. Close the lid of the bottle tightly. Pour some distilled water in bottle B and you can add 1 ml of oil and close the lid tightly. And in bottle C, put some calcium chloride or drying agent and seal the bottle. You may even try dipping your nails in milk, soapy water, oil, turmeric water, paint or you can probably dip it in lemon or cold water or simply keep your nails in sunlight. So different situations 
you can do this activity record your observations the next day and also after 2 3 days do you find that the nails have got rusted in all the cases if not then in which case does the nail get rusted find out the reasons my dear young discoverers these metals are very important for country's economy therefore we need to learn different ways of prevention of corrosion can you suggest me some ways yes rusting of iron can be prevented by painting any other okay we can even do it by oiling or greasing these you can remember easily as you must have observed from your daily life why the iron gate of your home is painted only to beautify it or to save it from corrosion you know there are other methods also for prevention of corrosion yes galvanizing chrome plating anodizing or making alloys now what is galvanization it is method of protecting steel and iron from rusting by coating them with a thin layer of zinc the galvanized article is protected against rusting even if zinc coating is broken can you reason this out try finding and yes alloying is another good method of improving the properties of a metal you know that the iron is most widely used metal and it is never used in pure state do you know why hmm because pure iron is very soft and it stretches easily when hot and when it is mixed with small amount of carbon it becomes hard and strong so when iron is mixed with nickel and chromium we get stainless steel which is hard and does not rust that is why your parents are buying utensils made of stainless steel in this way we get an alloy can you define an alloy now yes try writing a definition an alloy is a homogeneous mixture of two or more metals or a metal and a non metal explore and find out how alloys are made in industries by first melting the primary metal then dissolving the other element in it in a definite proportion and then it is cooled at room temperature ask your mother or your parents why the gold jewelry she wears is not made of pure gold my dear young discoverers go and find out more about alloys make a list of different alloys tabulate them and then you can match your answer with the one which is shown on the screen and yes i am sure you have seen this somewhere can you tell me where it is located come on yes this is iron pillar at delhi the wonder of indian ancient metallurgy find out more about metal heritage of india i am sure you will feel proud to be an indian now let's make a mind map to summarize all the methods of prevention of corrosion hmm so i'm sure you must be very happy and excited to see the collection in your portfolio i'm sure it must be full of colorful pictures collected over the journey you have gone through during the process of learning and all the information you have collected you have tabulated the results of the various quiz the various tasks which you undertook you all must have collected it in the form of beautiful drawing which you must have drawn by your own hand and yes don't forget to include the comic strip of gopal and tara in it so you can go and show your friends share your experiences even show it to your elders at home and i'm sure whenever you will go through this portfolio it is such a beautiful down the memory lane 
and you can share this with your grandparents, your neighbors and your friends, the beautiful journey which you have undertaken and this will also help you in self-assessment and progress of your learning.